Hey everyone, welcome back and happy Tuesday. All right guys, well get ready for this because this one's interesting. It's back to the Girardis of it all because it looks like the prosecutors are feeling that Tom Girardi's symptoms might be a little exaggerated, meaning he doesn't want to go to court, which could ultimately put him behind bars. We're going to get into that. And there's also a memoir that just came out. This does not sound good for the Girardis. And from there, well... Erica has her announcement. So before we jump in, if you guys haven't already, go ahead, smash that like button. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. And don't forget tonight, we have Anchor Watch at 11 p.m. Eastern, which is 8 p.m. Pacific, right here. With that, let's jump right in. It's time for all your binge-worthy pop culture news. Welcome to Up and Adam. Okay, guys, so thank you to RadarOnline.com for coming out with this because we haven't talked about the Girardis in quite some time. Things are going to continue to unfold, and this has been going on for how many years now? Well, attorney said from the jump that this was not going to be something that would be solved overnight. Let's get into the article. Again, thank you, Radar. Prosecutors believe Erica Jane's husband, Tom Girardi, has been exaggerating his medical issues and are demanding that he stand trial over accusations that he embezzled millions from clients. Back in 2020, see, three years, holy crap. Girardi and his law firm, Girardi Keese, were forced into bankruptcy by creditors. Many former clients accused the once powerful attorney of securing them a financial settlement in a legal dispute, but having excuses when it came time to pay the funds. Earlier this year, prosecutors accused Girardi of embezzling over $18 million from clients from 2010 to 2020, and the disbarred lawyer was charged with various counts of wire fraud, along with his various associates. In 2021, Girardi was placed under a conservatorship by his brother, Robert, who told the court the lawyer had been diagnosed with dementia and Alzheimer's. Well, again, if you guys remember that, the... Burglar st burglary story, the crashing the car story. I mean, there were so many stories that kept coming out that people just, they're like, either you guys have really, really bad luck or you guys are just really, really bad liars. That, was, honestly, that was sort of the general, there was one side, oh no, the Girardis wouldn't lie about this, poor them. It wasn't a big side. I'm not saying it was a huge percentage. And then the other side, and they were like, mm, your stories aren't adding up, girl. Hmm. Wait, let's get back to it. So Girardi was moved out of his mega mansion, which was later sold as a part of his bankruptcy and placed in a senior living facility. His criminal defense attorney asked the court for a mental evaluation to determine if Girardi was competent to stand trial. The parties have been fighting over the report being unredacted and a hearing is set for later this month. The prosecutor added, less than one month after the bankruptcy proceedings were initiated and criminal and state bar referrals were made by federal and state judges, defendant's brother filed a petition in Los Angeles Superior Court to have a conservator appointed, alleging that the defendant could no longer care for himself or his estate. Without the benefit of any testing, the petition was, well, granted, mere months later. They added, now after being criminally indicted for his years-long scheme, defendant attempts to avoid being held to account for his conduct by petitioning this court to find him incompetent to stand trial. However, despite the defendant's asserted incompetence, evidence of his normal routine immediately leading up to the demise of Girardi Keese years after defendant claims his purported mental competency issues began demonstrates that his instant symptoms are exaggerated. An artfully constructed self-serving portrait of a figure purportedly so diminished as to be beyond the legal system's reach. The government said, indeed, in the months leading up to the defendant's uh, conservatorship, he went to his law firm nearly every day and worked on multiple cases, negotiated loans to keep Girardi Keese afloat, sat for multiple depositions and interviews, and even moderated a panel discussion with other attorneys. Only after defendant's creditors started closing and when an escape hatch was needed most was the issue of... Girardi's mental competency first raised. His purposeful manipulation of these proceedings to avoid the consequences of a trial in this matter directly demonstrate how cunning and capable he truly is. 
That's coming from the prosecutors. The government has demanded that Girardi stand trial despite his attempts to be excused. And Erica filed for divorce, as we know, from Girardi after 21 years of marriage. The case has been put on pause until the bankruptcy case cases are resolved. Now, she was sued for the return of $25 million that Girardi's law firm used to pay for her bills. And I'm curious to see where that's going. But I think that they are reaching a settlement soon. I don't know. I feel like we haven't talked about this in a while. Now, there's another thing that I wanted to talk about, too, because there is this memoir coming out, right? This will be wild. And it's coming out, I believe it released last week. Hold on. It's called The Serpent's Tooth. The Serpent's Tooth is a memoir, right? Well, this is what I was told about this memoir really quick. I was told this is a book. Nancy Marston is the one who wrote the book. It's about her family's case David Lira took to trial. The one re Erica and Tom's daughter getting the lottery winnings, legal fees assigned to them. Well, now let me read you the overview of the book. Oof. Okay. Let's see if it'll let us zoom in over here. Yeah, okay. The Serpent's Tooth is the memoir of a courageous mother who fights tirelessly for the life of her daughter, a successful young film actress led criminally astray by a controlling older man and her husband, a highly decorated fire captain who falls prey to drugs. The riveting tale, this riveting tale of betrayal, addiction, and a lottery jackpot, which leads to a dramatic courtroom trial. The story unfolds with famous attorneys battling over millions in legal fees and when Greed rears its ugly head and becomes the primary motive. Though all the or through all the deceit and lies, a hard-edged judge is left to make the final decision as to who the rightful owner of the $5.2 million lottery prize is. Filled with emotions from anger and hate to grief and loss, the reader is wondering how this all could have ever happened. In the end, who is left standing, who falls, and who was ultimately to blame? Okay, so this is the serpent's tooth. If you guys want to go check it out, as you can see, this one's on Barnes and Noble, but I'm sure you guys can just look it up. And this just came out, which means people are going to start reading it. People are going to start talking about it. People are start going to start ripping apart exactly how the Girardis would be tied into this. And then we're going to have headline after headline after headline. I mean, how many people like involved in all of this? It's just wild to me but i don't know if this is like the first thing on erica's mind right now because if you guys remember erica did that pr thing where she went and she spoke with the victims and you know people some people thought it was a publicity stunt which i'm pretty sure based off of what i was told her pr team reached out to the person who was running the event and said hey erica would like to come and talk with the victims could that be a publicity stunt? Yeah, absolutely. If you guys watch that breakdown on E! Where they talk about the Kardashians and how they got so famous so fast. And like the flower bombing when nobody wanted to come to Kim's fragrance launch. So she got flower bombed and then boom, it was all over the place. Like there are certain PR moves that people implement. This is why people have PR teams to begin with. Whether, whether they're crisis PR or regular PR. This is their job to strategize. So could it have been a PR move? Yeah, maybe. Could she have really cared about the victims and wanted to hear them all out and try to understand why they are hurting so bad? Maybe. But she's also doing other things right now. So let's just bring this up for a second because Erica has an announcement. Do you have your tickets for Bet It All on Blonde? If not, go get them. Do you have your tickets? Go get your tickets for Bet It All on Blonde. You can go see Erica at her show. Okay. All right. Erica's winning right now. Tides are turning. Is that what it is? Or tides are changing? Anyways, guys, go ahead and comment below. What are your thoughts about the memoir, about the prosecutor saying, mm, we feel like, Mr. Girardi, you are exaggerating these symptoms. And also... Yeah, just go ahead. Just go ahead and pop off in the comments. Don't forget, I'm pinning the link for tonight, our live at 11 p.m. Eastern for Anchor Watch in the comment section. And we'll see you so very soon. Bye, guys. Love you.